Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and comrades against the binary. I am Sorio99, and it has been one hell of a ride. Almost exactly six years ago, the most recent original Mario game, Super Mario Odyssey, released to critical acclaim. And for half a decade, that's been it. We've had some remakes, ports, and side games, but no full new main series games. And for the 2D entries, it's been over a decade since New U was plopped into everyone's laps, and that was New U. So it was about time we got a new one. I didn't buy a physical copy because I wanted to pre-order, and I remember the headache that was pre-ordering Tears of the Kingdom. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, that's its full name, was released on October 20th, 2023, just four months after its announcement, though that doesn't mean there wasn't hype. Far from it, people were excited out of their minds for this game, partially just because it wasn't a new Mario game, and partially because it looked very solid on its own. I mean, this was a very interesting looking game right from the word go. Plus, being the first Mario game to release after the Mario movie may have helped promote it. Though granted, I didn't see the Mario movie, so it may be a terrible tie-in. The game began development back in 2019, after New Mario U's deluxe port came to Switch. The game was apparently built with a philosophy of freedom of choice, not just for players, but for developers. The team was supposedly full of devs who had never worked on a Mario game before, alongside the old guard like the director for the Galaxy games, Koichi Hayashida. They didn't have a deadline to produce a prototype to the game either, giving it much more time to crystallize into a smoother project. A focus on secrets and discovery apparently came into view during the early planning stages, with the hopes to avoid issues that a lot of recent games have had. The idea of just clearing a level and forgetting about it was apparently not too pleasant for the devs, so instead they looked for ways to make the levels change, to incentivize replays, or to just make them more memorable. Wait, they didn't want me to just forget level 1-6 in New Mario Wii? It's clear a lot of time and effort went into making this game feel different from previous games, though unfortunately they had a bit of help with that. A couple months after Wonder was announced, it was revealed that Charles Martinet would be stepping down as the voice actor of Mario & Luigi, starting with this game. It's a real shame, I won't lie, but hey, I'm glad he's had such a good run. In his place, Kevin Afghani is now the voice of Mario & Luigi, and he's doing a great job. Although the way he says wonderful as Mario really sounds weird, and I don't know why. This game's story is actually kind of interesting. Mario, Peach, and their entourage are all visiting the nearby Flower Kingdom for some kind of festival. Suddenly, Bowser! Because of course he's here. He grabs a Wonder Flower and suddenly he merges with the Castle of the Kingdom. So yeah, our goal this time is Castle Bowser instead of Bowser's Castle. Thanks, Bandy. None of that is what makes the story interesting for me, though. Neither is the fact that this is one of the only Mario games where the plot doesn't involve a single kidnapping. No, what's most interesting to me is that there's actually more story here. Yeah, unlike a lot of other Super Mario games, there are actually multiple plot points across the game. Almost every world has its own subplot with text boxes everywhere and even a few different recurring characters. Hell, they even have worlds that don't end in boss fights if it fits with the plotline. World 3 and World 5 in particular are surprisingly engaging, at least for a 2D platformer. I won't spoil World 5, but World 3 Shining Falls is really interesting. We have a plotline with player characters proving themselves in a series of trials which are represented by some really tricky levels. There's even a reappearing character called the Master Popolin who judges your progress, and when the world is completed, he just hands over the world's royal seed, no boss fight needed. It's a surprising take on structure for a Super Mario game. Oh, yeah, you need to collect royal seeds to beat the game. Should have mentioned that. This game obviously isn't going to win awards for its story, especially compared to some of the RPGs. So I will say, it does more with the same basic setup than Sticker Star did, at least. But of course, the writing isn't what everyone's going to be talking about, is it? Wow, this game looks good. The big topic of discussion for this game has always been the visuals. Stylized far more than any of the new Mario games, Wonder looks almost like a combo of claymation and hand-drawn animation. Obviously it isn't really either, it's 3D models mixed with intricate sprite work, but my lord, that doesn't change how much this looks like a beautiful cartoon. Character models and animation are obviously the highlights here. Everything feels so perfectly made to just ooze personality. Characters and enemies have been redesigned ever so slightly, so they're still recognizable while still looking unique from any other appearance. There are little animations everywhere, from going through pipes to getting new power-ups to even just running really quickly. It applies to the enemies, too. The enemies all react to successfully hitting Mario and co. The Goombas both sleep and react to active threats, and there are even levels that have the enemies animate in their own quirky ways. Hell, in levels that are all in silhouette, every enemy is still visible and distinct from each other. And even outside of the stylization, this game just looks gorgeous. 
Seriously, Nintendo has figured out how to get the most out of their tech at this point. Again, Shining Falls looks absolutely tranquil. And the wonder effects, oh, we'll get to those later, but they look absolutely incredible. I love it all. But I mean, like, I also like eating cake. That's hardly a shock. How about the soundtrack, huh? Yo, if you had told me before release that this would double as a Super Mario rhythm game, I would have asked why you were trying to kill me with hype. This game's music is absolutely incredible. It goes from tranquil to exciting to funky as hell. Even the overworld themes, my lord, I could listen to some of these world themes for hours and still be happy. Hell, there are even tracks from previous games. Let me tell you, I was not expecting to hear Slider from Mario 64 or the goddamn Isle Delfino theme all in a 2D Mario. And don't worry, the game gives you plenty of reason to pay attention to the music. Not only are there music-themed minigames based around the music note blocks, but there are also levels based on following the rhythm and wonder effects based around musical numbers. The second level in the game has enemies and pipes moving around based on a song the piranha plants are singing, and that's just the start. There's even a badge later in the game that gives you coins for jumping along to the beat of the music. Hell, I won't show it here, but even the final boss is based around keeping to the rhythm of a truly rocking remix of Bowser's theme. Look, I'm not the world's biggest expert on video game music or even rhythm games, but I am an absolute nerd about music, and good lord I love this game's soundtrack. Now I just need to find a way to download it to my phone. However, so far we've just been talking about surface level stuff. The game's story, the presentation, the development history, things like that. And while all of that is important, and I'm so glad it's as good as it is, at the end of the day it's not what matters most here. What matters most in a Mario game, especially a Super Mario game, is how much fun the game is to play. So, how fun is this game? Well, I decided to 100% complete it in about three days, so that should tell you something. Let's start with the basics. This level design is great. It feels like the other games in the series, at least the 2D ones, all had at least a few levels that I really didn't care for. Here, man, I struggle to think of a single level I wouldn't want to be in the game. Each of the main levels is built so well, allowing for players to explore and find collectibles or secrets, and you're encouraged to as the collectible 10 coins go directly into unlocking new items or grabbing more 1-ups. There are also a decent number of hidden exits, though unlike other games the hidden exits aren't always used to get off other pathways, instead they're mainly used to encourage replays and to buff up your Wonder Seed count. Yes, the main collectibles for the game are the Wonder Seeds, with the player earning one for grabbing each flagpole and for successfully finishing a Wonder Flower segment. Again, I promise we'll get to it. You need enough seeds in each world to open up certain levels, usually including the final palace level where a boss fight waits against Bowser Jr. Yeah, if I have one complaint with this game, it's definitely the boss fights. There are five in total, not counting the semi-boss sequences at the end of the airship levels. And of those five, four are against Bowser Jr. The only one that isn't is the final boss. I don't want to hold it against the game too much. I mean, every Mario game has reused bosses. Bowser in one, Birdo in two. We have Reznor as every mini boss in two different games. And to be fair, the wonder effect Junior uses can actually spice up the fight a little bit. Overall, though, I feel like it would have been more interesting to have at least one more boss against someone else. Like, Kamek shows up in the story. He has a presence in the game. I'd love to see what he could do with the Wonder Flower. But, again, I can't hold it against the game that much. At least it's only four reuses, that's better than some of these games. Well, in addition to the standard and boss levels, there are also smaller bonus levels that can be tackled along the way. Five types in particular. Break time levels are just short and sweet experiences, typically you confined to one screen that have you just working to grab a wonder seed. Badge challenges have you using a specific badge to clear an obstacle course, and we'll discuss those soon too, I promise. There is just so much to talk about with this game. Wiggly races are just that, races against a roller skating wiggler, which can be fun to get a high score on. KO arenas have you fighting a gauntlet of enemies, either three or four screens full, within a certain time if you want the 10 coins. And finally, the search party levels have you searching for hidden tokens to unlock the Wonder Seed. They're built around incentivizing playing in multiplayer, and now's as good a time as any to mention that I once again am playing this entire thing in single player. I don't hate the search parties still, I think it can be fun to scour the whole level, but the invisible and character blocks just make them a little bit more annoying than they have to be. Not to mention the character blocks just being an odd idea in general. The game has a total of 12 playable characters. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Blue Toad, Yellow Toad, Toadette, Yoshi, Red Yoshi, Yellow Yoshi, Light Blue Yoshi, and Nappin. Those first seven all played exactly the same. No physics changes, no different power-ups, they're basically just visual differences. 
Nabbit plays like he does in New U. He can't get hurt by enemies or obstacles, and he converts all power-ups into coins. The Yoshis are interesting, as they also can't get damaged by enemies, and they have all the abilities Yoshis picked up over the years, minus the eggs. They can flutter jump, swallow enemies, they're even rideable if you have anyone actually playing with you. Unlike me. However, since Navin and the Yoshis are kind of considered easier than the others, I mostly stick to the main seven. And for them, the only differences are that certain blocks are only visible for certain characters. It's not even like only they can hit those blocks. Any character can activate them, they're just invisible for them. Still, it's nice to have some character differences, since most of the different abilities are now part of the badges. The badge system, then. See, that little green wakeler ruling over the Flower Kingdom tags along with the player, and he can be equipped with one of 24 badges. There are three types of badges. The action badges, which add new abilities, moves, or physics changes to the player. The boost badges, which grant buffs to the player that can help to either collect certain things or just stay alive longer. And the expert badges, which change how the player can interact with the game. For the main game, there are three of these expert badges. Jet Run makes you always run, Spring Feet makes you constantly jump, and Invisibility... take a while, I guess. Personally, I think the coolest badges are the action badges. You can jump higher or move faster than usual, you can give yourself the crouching high jump from the 3D games, or the mid-air spin jump from the Galaxy games. You can even give yourself a swift kick to swim through the water, or a frickin' grappling vine that hooks onto walls and blocks. My go-to later on was definitely the boosting spin jump badge, but honestly, all of them are really cool additions to the loadout. Plus, I don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say it's in your best interest to get good with all the badges before the post-game. Okay, that's one thing I've been putting off down. What's next? What's next? Oh yeah, the Wonder, the Wonder Flower is maybe one of the best ideas for spicing up this game. Obviously, I think everyone saw the initial trailer and direct for Wonder and picked up on this game being the trippy Mario game. You know, because every other entry in the series was so lucid and sensible. Look, I'm not judging anyone for making the acid trip jokes, but y'all have got to know that's one of the most tired gags in the series, right? Or just in general, what drugs were they on is basically Sudeikiki for bad media engagement these days. What stands out to me about the Wonder Effects is just how much they spice up the levels without overshadowing everything else. The effects are very varied, while still revisiting and expanding on past ideas. I know some people were probably disappointed that a lot of the Wonder Effects were repeated, but personally I think seeing the effects iterated on and expanded is really cool, and it makes them feel like a core part of the game's design. It builds on what you've already learned while dealing with these effects initially, then tests it in new and interesting ways. And not every effect is repeated either. There are a decent few levels where grabbing the Wonder Flower gives an entirely unique scenario to run through, and the effects themselves vary wildly. Sometimes the player will be transformed into an enemy or obstacle from the level, sometimes the level will shift and change the physics you're playing with, and sometimes you have a straight up musical number to pop along to. Again, did I mention how much I love this game's music? However, Something I actually wasn't expecting was that most of the Wonder Flowers are actually skippable. I think that's actually an interesting idea for this kind of mechanic. It means most of the levels have two entirely different forms to play through, which is tons of fun. Again, replay value is a clear priority for the developers here. There's so much to talk about with this game, as if that wasn't obvious from how long I've been talking. I haven't even mentioned the power-ups. Furry bait, drill Kirby, and... Bubble Kirby. This is becoming a theme, huh? I mean, even the Wonder Flower could be thinking about Kirby gimmicks from the more recent games, though admittedly my brain is poisoned. I enjoy that there isn't a time limit like usual, since it makes it a lot easier to actually explore these levels without worrying about running out of time. I also find it interesting that there's no score counter, but there is a combo system still. Not a pro or con, really, but I do find it interesting. Again, there's so much to talk about with this game that I obviously can't touch on everything. However, one thing I do want to point out is how glad I am that I played every other Super Mario before this. Because it feels like there are ideas from across the franchise all in this one game. The last three numbered worlds can be tackled out of order, but the final boss level can only be unlocked with all six of the main world rewards, just like Mario Land 2. The Shadow Clones from Galaxy 2 appear as one of the wonder effects, while the break time levels feel like the mystery boxes from 3D Land and 3D World. Of course, the free roam areas of the overworld feel like they're straight out of 3D World, and the purple coins from Odyssey appear as flower coins. There are so many references to 64, from music to effects to racing against a former enemy species. Spraying water out of the elephant's trunk feels like it was pulled from sunshine, while the playable characters from New U all make their return. 
There are even items from Mario Maker, like how the on-off switch works. And there's a metric ton taken from Mario World. The spinning face blocks return, you can throw enemies straight upwards, the snail enemies behave the same as Koopas from World, the special world can be accessed long before the post-game if you take a few secret paths, and look, World was already my favorite 2D game in the series, so I'm absolutely not going to bitch about this many throwbacks to it. But the thing is, this still feels like its own game, rather than just one big nostalgia grab. There are dozens of new enemies made for this game, old level themes get spiced up in unique ways, and like, I'm sorry, have you seen this damn game? I love this game. I love it so much. Wonder is an absolute goddamn masterpiece, one of the best in the whole series. I don't think it's perfect, again, no video game ever is. The boss fights are repetitive, there are some missed opportunities, and the absolute final bonus level is literally the only thing I couldn't finish within three days. Whether that's criticism of how hard that level is, or of how relatively short or easy the rest of the game is, I'll let you decide. Overall, though, I absolutely adore this game. I mean, what else can I say? It's a goddamn wonder.